On June 15th and 16th in New York, in Manhattan, I'm going to be there with a group of extraordinary visionaries. I know my business partner, Ray Kurzweil, considered by Bill Gates one of the most brilliant people on the field of AI, will be there. Ray and I started Singularity University together, and we're there at the 2045 Congress to really help people understand where the world is going. You know, we're living during a period in time where exponential growth is enabling small teams to do extraordinary things, things that only governments and large corporations could do before. Artificial intelligence, robotics, nanomaterials, synthetic biology, digital medicine, 3D manufacturing, computers, networks. These are the powerful tools that are growing at such a rate that we cannot even fathom where these are going to take our lives, our industries, and our society. So join me. We're going to have an amazing conversation. I'm a molecular biologist by training and a physician by training and then a serial entrepreneur over the last you know, 20, 30 years. And I love thinking about where things are going in the future. And it struck me as I looked back, thinking about how life has evolved, that really patterns repeat themselves over and over and over again. And we're in the midst of a repeating pattern right now. Uh, the notion that as life evolved on Earth, it began as very simple single cell, single cell organisms called prokaryotes. And prokaryotes were a very, you know, basically a bag of cytoplasm with some DNA in it. And those single cell uh, organisms uh, started to incorporate biological technology into them. The biological technology I'm referring to are uh, mitochondria that help them really process energy more efficiently and create energy so they become more capable cells, Golgi apparatus, endoplasmic reticulums, cellular um, uh, nuclear membranes, and so forth. Uh, and I thought about how those single cell life forms as they incorporate technology are very much how we are today as humans beginning to incorporate technology in us. Um, you know, whether it's the, the cell phone or whether it's biomedical technology in our, our bodies. What life did next was that uh, life went from being uh, you know, prokaryotic to eukaryotic life forms, more complex single cell life forms. And those eukaryotic life forms uh, began to become multicellular life forms where you know, a collection of a hundred cells, a thousand cells, a million cells would come together and form a more complex organism where all of these individual cells were alive, but when they worked together, they did an extraordinary thing. And you and I are a collection of 10 trillion cells um, that, are, that make up tissues and organs and ultimately a unique human being. And I've thought about how the technology that we're creating today uh, at an exponential rate, literally the human machine interface technology of ultimately being able to plug in through uh, optogenetics or you know uh, human machine chip interfaces are and the internet of course are giving us the ability to communicate in a much more intimate fashion where I think well within the next decade there's going to be the potential for me to know people's feelings and thoughts in a much more intimate fashion. And if all of a sudden we are becoming a species uh, of seven billion interconnected individuals, what I call a meta-intelligence, we are a new organism, just like, yes, we're, we're seven billion individuals, just like I'm a, I'm a collection of 10 trillion individual cells, but these 10 trillion cells become conscious as an individual named Peter Diamandis. And I think that uh, on this planet, we are alive during a period of evolutionary change, where we are going from a collection of, of billions of individuals to a connected populace of humans interfacing with an extraordinary amount of artificial intelligence, computational power that's around the internet, where we together are becoming what I call this meta-intelligence. And that's an exciting time to be alive, and I, I think about us as a species becoming conscious on a new level like never before. We're going from evolution by natural selection, which is Darwinism, to evolution by intelligent direction. You know, we're at a point where we're going to start to evolve our biology and, as you say, to become independent of this substrate that, that evolves very slowly. You know, uh, humans are becoming themselves an information technology. It's really our thoughts our memes, um, our consciousness, which if we can begin to liberate from the biological constraints that we have, that will allow us to evolve far faster. And 
you know, uh, we've seen this time and time again where things go from one substrate to a next. And there's no reason not to believe that uh, we can't do that again. Now, the question is, on what time frame? And I think one of the big challenges is that we are, by our nature, linear thinkers. We think in a linear projected fashion. And when technology is growing exponentially, it's hard for people to realize the rate of growth. But we're running out of physical frontiers. And one thing about becoming more of a, uh, a virtual persona is that there are an infinite number of frontiers. In fact, I can work eventually with my AI, my artificial intelligence, and create a world that is of the dream I want to live in and go and live in that world. And I can be the, the king you know, of my own world and invite people to come in and be part of that. And I can invite you to come and play in my world. And we're going to have an infinite number of realities we can start to, to explore. Clearly, um, other benefits include our ability to become a space-faring species, where the physical limitations of, uh, of accelerating things to the speed of light uh, or of uh, really needing to you know, remain alive for longer than the normal human lifespan uh, will we'll change and we become liberated for our ability to go and, and populate this galaxy and this universe and the, what may be an infinite number of universes. And ultimately, it's the ability to, um, to become far more, you know, the term is dangerous to say, but godlike, where we have life everlasting, uh, where we have um, uh, meaning that we don't have to die a physical death. Uh, that we are who we are, our mission, our purpose, our consciousness can continue for a longer period of time. And when we become, as, when we become conscious as a meta-intelligence ourselves, will we look out into the universe and see thousands or millions or billions of similar conscious planet-level uh, existences that have, that have come into being? I mean, it's you know, literally insane to think about these things. There are a crazy, infinite number of options. But it's happening during our lifetimes, and that's what makes it so extraordinary and so exciting to be alive right now. I think we're living in a time where small teams of individuals are literally able to do what only governments and large corporations could do before. You know, one example is the fact that space projects were only the purview of the Soviet Union, the Russian space agency, NASA. And now we see groups like uh, Scaled Composites that won the Ansari X Prize building private spaceships. Uh, we have a $30 million competition funded by Google uh, for the Google Lunar X Prize, where we have 24 teams around the world building robots to go and land on the moon. So it's extraordinary what's possible. You know, what's happening is that people are now empowered more than ever before. Uh, as an individual, I can tap into global genius anywhere on the world. You know, I can tap into cloud computing and have access to thousands of, of computers. I can tap into 3D manufacturing and manufacture stuff anywhere. Uh, you know, people's need to have a huge capital to do big things in the world is changing rapidly. So I believe that if you can hit one of two things, either a topic that a lot of people are passionate about, and so you can crowdsource, if you would, open source hardware, open source software, open source software to create the, have the crowd work on things. You can, you can leverage thousands, tens of thousands, millions of people to focus on something. The other option is, as an individual, can you create uh, a business around it uh, where you have incremental steps? So Google created an extraordinarily profitable business of search, and now they're using that business to drive autonomous cars the Google Glass, you know, a whole slew of, of secret projects under, under Google X because they have a profitable business and a visionary leadership. I don't think it needs to be the state anymore. In fact, I think that uh, these kinds of big, bold projects are not being taken over uh, by the government.